Hi, and welcome to this live reading from Motherland, the Tom Grant series, book three, by Samantha Adair, and this is presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Chapter one. Tom. You should have shot him straight through the chest and not dithered around aiming for his head. You aren't good enough. Tom squints at the protein bars on the shelf, looking for the ones that taste best. They're all like cardboard. So one shot would have killed him straight through the heart. Instead, you ended up using six rounds. At least he's dead, but still. He turns around after yanking a box off the shelf. An old lady peers at him, her eyes wide and her mouth agape. Oh, shit. I've got to go. I've just terrified a senior citizen. Yeah, okay, thanks, I guess, James ends the call. Are you all right? Tom asks the old woman. He steps towards her and goes to touch her elbow. The old woman shuffles backwards and holds up a finger. Don't touch me, you, you psychopath! Her trembly voice bounces around the boxes of cereal and snack bars on the surrounding shelves. Tom cringes and steps for towards her. That's a bit harsh. It usually takes people weeks to figure that out. She lifts her cane and pokes him in the thigh. What the? He rubs his leg and watches as she retreats backwards, glaring at him. I have an elderly neighbor, you know, he grumbles. I'm reporting you to the manager, the old woman sniffs and hobbles away. Excellent. Just what I need. The overweight manager of Tesco on to me. Tom walks into the next aisle and is confronted with loaves of bread. I just want normal white bread. He paws through the grainy, whole wheat, pumpkin seed. Pumpkin seed? A hushed giggle to his left catches his attention. A young couple, all of about nineteen, laugh together over which bread to get. He rolls his eyes. The boy squeezes the girl on the bum, and she squeals and slaps his arm. <sighs> get a room. His phone rings again, and he pulls it out and checks the screen. Martha. Where are you? Tesco. I'm buying. I'm trying to buy food, but it's irritating. I also scared an old lady half to death, and she poked me with her stick. Did you say she poked you with her stick? Yes, and it actually smarts. He rubs his thigh again while reading the bread labels. You've bought food before, Tom. Surely it's not that hard. Well, I'm always in and out of hotel rooms and in other countries, aren't I? Well, that's fair. And I don't think Tesco does room service. I would think not, Martha pauses. You've never heard of online shopping? How do you think I organized deliveries to your flat when you weren't being sociable? Is that what we're calling it now, not being sociable? Tom grins and pulls a loaf of bread off the shelf. I was drunk, Martha, pickled, couldn't walk a straight line. Luckily, I didn't kill anyone. He turns and the old lady with the stick is glaring at him again, shaking her head. Ah, what? Never mind. What's up? Tom watches the old lady disappear toward the cat food, but not before throwing another glare over her shoulder. Tom grins, shaking his head. How are the meetings going? Tom rolls his eyes to the ceiling and huffs. Fine. I don't go every week, though, and you can't make me. That doesn't sound immature at all. Did you ha call for a reason? Have you heard from Isabella? Tom's blood freezes. Why are you asking me that? Not for a few weeks. Why? What's happened? I've been made aware she's left Belgium and wanted to check with you. She's left... Tom's adrenaline spikes, and it's suddenly hot in the cool supermarket. Where is she? Why didn't she tell me? Fuck. Never mind. It's fine. I'll see if we can get a track. A track? Tom yelps, and the young couple who are giggling over bread scurry away from him. Well, Admiral, Mo Admiral Moore will still be wanting her, no doubt. It's so it's best we find her first. Martha pauses and Tom's pulse thunders through his ears. We've spoken about this, Tom. Yes, uh, she was supposed to tell me when she left, after her father was well enough. Okay, well, just keep trying her phone, yes? The line goes dead. Tom dials Isabella's number and slaps the phone to his ear. The phone rings. It's on. His heart doubles its speed as he waits. Hello? Is! 
Hey, I was just about to call you. Tom frowns. Why is she so calm? Where are you? Are you okay? Of course I'm okay. Why wouldn't I be? Well, you're... Where are you? His heart hasn't let up, and he pushed, pushes his hand to his chest to curb its insistence. How about we play a game? <laughs> a game. Is, I'm really not... Just tell me where you are. He glares at the bread in front of him, hating it for no reason. Let's see if you can guess where I am. Is, what are you on about? I'll give you a hint. Is. Tom rakes a hand through his hair and blows a hard breath out of his mouth. Relax or you'll squash your bread. Squash my... Tom spins around and looks at the end of the aisle. He squints, leaning forward. His heart slams against his ribs and he balls his shirt in a fist over his heart. He pushes the phone harder into his ear. Is? Isabella smiles and gestures to his groceries. Bread and protein bars. All the major food groups, then. She puts her phone in her pocket. Tom drops the box of bars and bread and stalks to Isabella. He cradles his hands on either side of her jaw and pulls her face to his. Her skin and soft mouth against his own send warmth through his chest. She kisses him back, running both hands up his neck and into his hair. They stumble into the bread, sending loaves crashing to the floor. Isabella pulls her face away and laughs. <laughs> this isn't quite how I imagined it. Well, you surprise ambushed me in the supermarket. He kisses her again, step, stepping on a loaf of bread. She giggles into his mouth and puts, his, puts both hands on his chest. <laughs> Stop! Can't. He rests his face against hers and breathes her in. I missed you. Isabella's hands are still against his chest, and she digs her fingers in and nips his lip. I missed you, too. Tom grabs his, her hands and holds them against him. They stand in the middle of the bakery aisle with their foreheads together. There! Him! Tom hears the trembly voice of his supermarket nemesis behind him, and he turns, holding Isabella against him. The manager is with the old woman. He, he threatened to kill me! Wait, what? Tom drops his, his hands and walks toward the old woman. I did not. And I poked him with my cane. She lifts her cane as though it's evidence and jerks her head toward Tom. And now he's ruined your bread. She tuts and rolls her eyes. The overweight manager in his crushed Tesco shirt sighs and rubs his forehead. I'll pay for the bread I ruined, Tom says. The manager looks past him and counts the loaves on the floor squished. That's nine loaves. Tom squints at the offending bread and steals a glance at Isabella who's stifling a laugh. Yes, Tom grins and turns back to the manager. All nine loaves. It was worth it. Right then, the manager goes to leave and the old woman swats him with her stick. What now? Have you forgotten something? The woman curls her lip and taps her slipper-adorned foot. The manager takes a deep breath and holds both palms out toward Tom. Please don't kill anyone in my store. Isabella snorts and Tom squashes a grin as the old lady breathes fire at him. I'll try and contain myself. The manager nods and walks off, the old woman trailing after him. Isabella slides her arms around Tom's waist and leans against his back. Are you scaring old ladies? Her voice vibrates against him and he turns to face her. He slides his hands up her neck and holds her face. Only the evil ones. She probably has fifty cats at home. Tom chuckles and swipes his thumbs across her cheeks. Are you busy? When? Right now? Isabella smiles and wraps her arms around the back of his neck. I can spare a few minutes. I require more than a few minutes. <sighs> okay. Tom thrusts open the door to his flat and pulls Isabella in behind him. She scratches her fingers down the front of his shirt before dipping her hands under it and sliding it up over his head. He throws it away as she squirms out of her own top and it pushes herself backwards against the wall. They both hustle to kick their shoes across the room. Tom slaps both hands against the wall over her head and pushes his mouth to hers. Isabella unbuckles his belt and rips the buttons of his trousers apart. They fall to his ankles and he kicks them away. Isabella runs her hands inside the waistband of his pants and squeezes his hips. She digs her, her fingers into his skin, rubbing her thumbs back and forth. Tingles erupt under her touch and Tom drops his face into her shoulder. Jesus. He holds his breath a moment and trails her mouth his mouth along her jaw and down her neck. Tom, she rasps. 
Tom rests his lips against hers and kisses her while his fingers trace the lace over her breast. He stops his hand over her heartbeat and rests it there. Isabella whimpers into his mouth. She pulls her hands from his waist and slides her jeans off her hips, letting them drop to the floor. Her hot breath brushes against his skin, and a tremble rips through his core and down his legs. He runs his fingers along the inside of his waistband of her knickers, and she gasps. They, bo they both still a moment, staring at each other, breath colliding. Isabella grabs his hand and pulls him to the bedroom. She snaps her bra off with one hand and throws it on the floor. Tom pulls her against him, his hand nestled in the small of her back. He feels the warmth of her chest against him and her mouth nipping at his neck and all self-control is lost. He walks her backwards and lays her on the bed. She arches her back and her arms reaching above her head. Goosebumps pop up under his fingertips as they glide down her arms over the curve of her breasts, across her stomach, and down her lace knickers. Please, she whispers, her ragged breaths coming out in short bursts. He traces the outline of her knickers from her waist and around each leg, slowing around the heat between her thighs. Oh, my, Isabella draws into breath as he slips his fingers inside the lace. His mouth is on hers again as he brushes his fingers back and forth. Isabella lifts her hips and scratches her nails down his back, reaching his waist. She rips his pants down and he chuckles against her mouth. Forget the fancy stuff, Tom, she squeezes her eyes shut and tilts her head back. I need you now. He can't resist her soft neck and slides his mouth down across her throat. He pulls her knickers off and hovers above her a moment and waits. Isabella opens, one's eye, opens one eye and quirks a brow. Stop being a tease. You love it. I do. She wraps her legs around his waist and tilts her hips up to meet him. Tom pushes and feels her warmth wrap around him. Isabella gulps in a breath and throws her head back. She rolls until she is on top of him and moves her hips in slow, hard circles. Jesus is, Tom closes his eyes and bites his bottom lip. Seconds later, Isabella kisses him hard and he slides a hand through her hair to the back of her head, holding her face against his own. Oh, God, she squeals against his mouth. She pulls herself up and tosses her hair down her back. She gasps in air before letting it out and collapsing against him, her nails clawing his shoulders. Tom rolls her down next to him and drifts his mouth along her neck. Her pulse thumps against his lips. She drags her hands up his body as he grips the pillow and moans against her skin. She squeezes her legs tighter around his waist and pushes against him. His body tenses and he exhales in a rush against her neck. He lets go of the pillow and drifts his hands down her shoulders and chest, stopping at her waist, in the crease between her leg and hip. He drops next to her and pulls her against him, kissing her deeply. I love you, he whispers. She smiles against his mouth. And I love you.